when scores of newspapers run an op-ed titled Christianity is the greatest engine of moral reform and cultural riches the world has ever known, you can pretty much bank on it winding up in my inbox several times. So yeah, this fetid tripe popped up on Christmas Day and came to us from some evangelical historian out of Baylor. Do you hear a gay? I don't hear anything university. So you know it's going to be objective. And it sets a record for self-refutation. Here's the goddamn opening sentence. Quote, Often media outlets, it seems, are uninterested in religion, especially Christianity, except when it's connected to scandals and electoral controversies, end quote. Said the article in several media outlets with no subject other than, boy, is Christianity awesome, and a title that's just a verbose way of saying Christianity is the best of the religions. Are you fucking kidding me? First of all, how the fuck is anybody going to present themselves as an authority on moral reform when they're collecting their paycheck from an institution dedicated to ironing out the persistent bend in the moral universe's arc? But secondly, and more importantly, the fuck it is! This is a claim you've got to trudge through a lot if you read much history. Basically, the argument goes like this. If you use the morality of Western European nations as your measuring stick, Western European nations are the most moral nations. And because those nations were historically Christian, Christianity must be great at making nations moral. Now, it's tempting to dismiss this argument by pointing out some of the other things those nations have in common historically, right? Like maybe the moralizing force was the diatonic scale or the bubonic plague, but that skirts around their actual argument because you can't actually argue that Christianity, specifically the Roman Catholic brand, was a moralizing force in Western Europe throughout the modern history of the region. It's hard to argue that it was very good at doing that when you compare the morality of Western Europe when the Vatican was in charge to, I don't know, anywhere else in the goddamn world at that time. But it clearly did set the moral tone for the region for a lengthy period. Of course, if we accept the measure of morality that they're using here, you can't help but notice that the bull market on morality that we're experiencing now didn't start when we started being Christian. In fact, it actually started when we stopped. Right? The, the embrace of rationality that we shorthand as the Enlightenment is the genesis of whatever moral capital the West has to offer. What's more, the historians making this claim admit as much, but then they try to give Christianity credit anyway by saying that the Enlightenment couldn't have happened if the Christian worldview hadn't primed society and built an ethical skeleton the Enlightenment thinking could hang on or some such bullshit. Now, that's audacious on its face, right? It's the, yeah, but I loosened the jar of historical accomplishments. But it's far worse when you consider that the movement we're talking about was literally defined by the extent to which people stopped listening to the goddamn church. It was an intellectual rebellion against what religion was selling, both the Catholics and the Lutherans. So, yeah, couldn't have done it without them, sure. But, like, you know... I couldn't have quit smoking if it hadn't been for cigarettes. I'm still not tempted to give them a lot of the credit. But the worst thing, though, about this argument is that it mistakes homogeny for morality. Right? I, I, I'm willing to bet that the Muslim nations think that theirs are the most moral. I, I mean, your moral system may be the one that wins out in a democratic worldwide vote, but only because your continent had the best boats and the most coastline back in the day. The near universality of Western ethics is a byproduct of colonialism, not their innate superiority. If the Chinese had done it, historians would say the same shit about Confucianism or Buddhism or something, because as it happens, stuff like we should figure out a way to do this where we don't kill each other and stuff is just universal goals of society, not some secret fucking formula that Jesus gave us, right? Like once the people of the world were knit together, some basic understanding of morals was bound to develop. It happened every other time multiple isolated groups of humans came together. You know, you know the, the, the people who could throw the biggest dick on the scale at that point got to dictate a lot of it. And so mostly they won out, but they didn't always win. Hell, I, I, the very means by which they spread their morals was deemed immoral by the International Court of Public Opinion, and we eventually did away with colonialism. Or, or I mean, at least did away with 
openly bragging about it. And sure, historians can point to all kinds of influential historical thinkers in the field of ethics that were strongly influenced by their Christian faith. But since you can also point to influential thinkers in the field that have other religions or no religion at all, it would be fucking pointless. Right. You can also point to moral monsters that were strongly influenced by their Christian faith, but they don't factor into this shit. So when they make the claim to some kind of unique Christian morality, it's worth keeping in mind that with apologies to Voltaire, it's not unique, it's not Christian, and it's not morality.